Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the series of videos on SAP AI Core. In this video, uh, we will look at a simple use case and then proceed with the training the model. In SAP AI Core, a scenario is nothing but your ML use case. Uh, so you can give some meaningful name to your use case. Uh, in our example, uh, we are going to look at a classic uh, supervised classification problem. Uh, Fisher in the year 1936, uh, he collected measurements for three different types of iris flowers, uh, the versicolor of setosa and virginica. Uh, we are going to train our model to accurately predict uh, the type of uh, flower uh, based on any kind of uh, measurements. Uh, so there are four different features uh, of the flower and then the actual label itself. Uh, so this is our data set uh, that we are going to train the model on. Uh, so there are about 150 rows uh, that Fisher uh, collected the samples on. Uh, so for our use case or scenario, uh, the first step is to train the model. Once the model is trained, uh, then we can serve the model to make uh, predictions. Uh, so in this video, uh, we are only going to look at uh, the training the model. Uh, so let's look at uh, the training the model. Uh, and our goal is to do these steps in a production ready manner. Uh, so not just uh, writing code so we can train the model. That we can do fairly easily. Uh, but what we want to do is uh, do it in a production ready manner. And for this, uh, we will use SAP AI Core. Uh, so let's uh, quickly look at the uh, training flow itself. Uh, so we start with the machine learning code in Python. Uh, this is going to use the scikit-learn library to train the model. Uh, while scikit-learn itself, uh, it already comes with the iris data set. Uh, but just for illustrative purpose, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to read this data from an AWS S3 bucket. Uh, also, let's assume uh, that in order to train the data that we need the user to input some parameters. Uh, so we are going to have two input parameters for our machine learning code, uh, and that's going to be the class label and the kernel. Um, now, once the ex uh, execution is complete, uh, the model is going to be created. Uh, so the model is created. Uh, once the ML model is created, uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to copy it to the AWS S3 bucket, and this will conclude our training phase. So this is uh, that flow that we want to achieve. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so first step, uh, all of these uh, exercises, the steps in these exercises, they can be done using the SAP free tier. Uh, there is an amazing exercise on how you can set up the SAP BTP free tier uh, to use the SAP AI Core and SAP AI Launchpad. Um, so I'm not going to go over the steps, but I'll quickly show you where you can find it. Uh, so if you go to the link that's there in that uh, PDF file or in this uh, presentation, uh, so you can see that uh, here is your this uh, link to the exercise. And if you go to this link right here, uh, this will uh, show you how to use the boosters uh, to set up your SAP BTP free tier to use SAP AI Core and SAP AI Launchpad. Uh, I'm not going to go over the steps, uh, but uh, these steps here are pretty detailed, uh, so you, you should have no problem uh, following it. Uh, and in addition to this, uh, what you can also do is you can go to the API Accelerator Hub. Uh, so if you go to this link right here, uh, what you can do is you can download this uh, JSON file and bring this into your Postman. Uh, so if you bring it into your Postman, uh, you will have all the reference APIs that are available in AI Core. Uh, so do that as well, uh, because this is a good uh, reference uh, that you can use for some of our activities. Okay, so now that we have uh, the SAP BTP free tier set up for SAP AI Core, and we also have the Postman, just the reference APIs, uh, now we are ready to get started. Uh, so the step one uh, is to create the training YAML file. Uh, this file uh, pretty much dictates what we want to do. And that is the copy the data set from the AWS S3 bucket. Uh, let the user input the parameters. And once the model is trained, uh, copy the files uh, to the S3 AWS bucket. Uh, for this, uh, we will use the Argo workflows. Uh, specifically, uh, we are going to be using the workflow templates to be exact. Uh, if you specify the kind uh, to workflow template, uh, then the file is a workflow template. Uh, and if you specify Specify it as workflow, then it is a workflow. So all you have to do is to change this kind, and the file is either a template or a workflow. Uh, so what is the difference between a workflow and a workflow template, you might ask? Uh, so think of workflow template 
as a two-step process. Uh, so it is the definition of a workflow uh, uh, that is persisted in the cluster, uh, but before you, but you need to submit it uh, before it is executed. Uh, so remember, a template by itself uh, will not get executed uh, unless it is submitted. Uh, so I have highlighted two sections in the workflow template file. Uh, section one uh, refers to input artifacts, and this is the data set that need to be copied into the data container. A Docker container, and uh, it is copied into the app slash data folder in the container. Uh, Argo workflow templates, uh, they have a native uh, support for it. Uh, so for uh, the S3 bucket and so on. Uh, so all you have to do is uh, specify these two lines of code uh, in the YAML file, and then it will get copied to the AW. It, it'll get copied into the Docker container. Uh, of course, we have to let Argo know uh, that the source of the data set is an AWS S3 bucket, uh, but we will do that later. But uh, for now, uh, just these two lines in your YAML file is going to copy copy uh, the data set into this uh, folder in the container. Uh, section two, uh, so here uh, this refers to the output artifacts. And uh, here again, we have some lines of code and uh, Argo CD knows uh, once the model is trained to copy the model that is located in slash app slash model uh, into the S3 bucket. Again, we will kind of uh, pro provide uh, where the S3 bucket is and so on. Okay, uh, so we already saw that the Argo workflow templates has native uh, artifact support, uh, so we are good. So our Argo CD will do all of the hard work for us. Uh, so if I go back to the previous slide, uh, you can see Argo workflows. Uh, uh, they have support for native artifact support from S3, Git, and wherever. Uh, there is also support for templating, and we will look at the support for templating in the next slide. And also, if you want to run this in a schedule that like a timer, uh, then they have uh, support for Cron, cron workflows as well. Uh, so why do I create this workflow template uh, YAML file uh, instead of uh, just a workflow? Uh, so uh, the reason I mentioned is uh, uh, that uh, uh, that you this needs to be submitted, uh, and uh, and what we can do is um, uh, we can. Um, uh, we can put some placeholders, and the placeholders can be filled uh, before submitting. Uh, and that's one of the features that we will be using, the templating features. Um, for example, uh, we want the ML engineer uh, to input some params uh, for the ML code. Uh, so in our case, we have two input parameters, class, label, and kernel. Uh, so the ML engineer would have to supply the values uh, before submitting it and before executing it. Uh, there are other use cases as well for using templates. Uh, it can can be reused by workflows and workflow templates. Uh, but in our simple use case, uh, we are simply going to use it uh, to fill the placeholders uh, before submitting. Uh, so how do I create this workflow template YAML file? Uh, so the easiest way uh, is to copy an existing file and then change the values to meet your needs. Uh, and also Visual Studio Code, uh, if you install the SAP AI Core extension, uh, it allows you to create the YAML file as well. Uh, so you can do it in two different ways. Uh, but again, the easiest way, even when you do it through the Visual Studio Code, you would have to go in and change some values. Uh, so I find it easier just to take an existing uh, YAML file and just change the values. Um, so in this slide, uh, let's look at how this YAML file is structured. Uh, there are two main parts to this YAML file, uh, the metadata part and then the spec. And of course, you have the API version and the kind. And this is, uh, you would just uh, copy it by pattern like this. Uh, so in the metadata section, uh, obviously, you have to give a name. Uh, this is mandatory. Uh, because we are using it for training, I'm going to call it Iris Training Pipeline in line four. Uh, and this needs to be unique. Uh, then we give the scenario name and description. Uh, and we will use the same scenario and description when we do the serving as well. Uh, this workflow template uh, that we are creating is for training. Um, the term executable refers uh, to an instance of uh, the template. Uh, so for example, when we take the template and fill all the placeholders uh, uh, and with values and submit it, right? Uh, so anyways, uh, just give a name for the executable. And because this executable is for training, I'm going to give the name Iris model training and also a description for the executable. 
Now here uh, in line 12 and 13, uh, we know that we have an input artifact and an output art artifact. The input artifact is the data, the training data. So we are giving hints to SAP AI Core uh, saying that the input artifact uh, is of a data set uh, type and then the output data type, which is iris model, uh, and we will be declaring them in the specs uh, section, uh, but we are just giving hints to SAP AI Core that this iris model refers to a model. Uh, and then uh, you give an ID for the scenario, uh, and again, scenario is your use case, uh, so this is like your project itself, and we will use the same thing for uh, when we do the serving as well. And now let's uh, shift our attention to the spec section. Uh, so every workflow uh, should have at least one template. Uh, so in this case, uh, if you look at our uh, specs section, uh, we only have one template, uh, but it should have at least one template. Uh, and then in the spec section, we also have an entry point, uh, my pipeline, and uh, this tells uh, what template to run first. Uh, so in our case, we only have one, but if you have multiple templates, then this will kind of tell which one to run first. Uh, but it, because in our case, we only have one, my pipeline is the one that is going to run. Uh, therefore, my pipeline will run first. And then in the template, uh, we specify input and output parameters, uh, artifacts. Uh, so in our case, in our workflow, we know that we have an input artifact and an output artifact. Uh, so we are going to specify that. Um, so input artifacts are to describe where to get the training data from. Uh, and here is the name that we gave Iris data set. And in this uh, metadata section, we gave a hint to SAP AI Core uh, that this is a data set. And then the output artifact is Iris model. And in the previous slide, I showed where we gave a hint to SAP AI Core uh, saying that this is a model. And the output artifact will get copied from this app slash model folder uh, onto your AWS S3 bucket. Okay, so now we have specified the input and the output, and then we are also going to have some input parameters uh, that the ML engineer uh, would have to specify uh, in order to fill this workflow template and run it. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we have the container image itself. Uh, and uh, this is the image of the Docker container. Again, Argo CD, uh, it has native support to pull down this image for us. Now, uh, now that we have the template itself, uh, the workflow template, uh, we need to let SAP AI Core know about this workflow template. Uh, where is it located? And for this, uh, we need to place our template file in a GitHub repository and uh, provide the folder in which it is located uh, along with the GitHub repo uh, and the head. Uh, right now, only head is supported. Okay, so let's uh, see all this in action and then uh, we will continue with the training phase. Okay, so what I will do, uh, I have a GitHub repository. So I will put the GitHub repository link in the video description. Uh, so go ahead and clone this uh, GitHub repository. Uh, I have already cloned this uh, GitHub repository right here, uh, but you would uh, say git uh, clone and then the repository link. And I will put the link in the uh, video description as well. Once you clone it, uh, you will see that there is a pipelines folder, uh, but because this is the finished product, uh, it has both the serving and the training YAML file, uh, but let's assume that you only have the training.yaml file. Uh, so right now, let's assume that you only have the training.yaml file, and this is the file that we have seen before. Uh, so you have the metadata section and you have the spec section, and then it's the same file that I showed you in the slide deck. Uh, so what I want to do now uh, is I want to let SAP AI Core know about this GitHub repository and where this uh, YAML file resides. Uh, so I go into my SAP AI Core, and for this you can go into your subdivision uh, sub, uh, sub account in your SAP uh, BTP, and you can click on the SAP AI Launchpad. Uh, so for example, you would go into your sub account. And in your sub account, uh, if you had followed the steps in that uh, blog uh, or in that exercise, uh, you would have uh, a subscription to SAP AI Launchpad. Uh, so you would click on the SAP AI Launchpad and uh, that should uh, take you to the uh, SAP AI Launchpad uh, that I have uh, this tab open. So click on this SAP AI Launchpad. Uh, you should have it right here. Now, first thing what I want to do is I want to put all my artifacts. Uh, so you can see here there is the resource group. Uh, there is a resource group uh, called default uh, 
uh, that is uh, created automatically. Uh, but I want to put all my artifacts in my own uh, resource group. Uh, so I'm going to create a resource group. Uh, so for that, I'm going to use uh, the uh, Postman. And again, I will have the Postman collection uh, in the uh, I will have the Postman collection in the GitHub repository. Uh, so what you can do is uh, this AI API URL. Uh, so uh, let me show you how you can get this information. Uh, so if you go into your sub account, and as long as you've gone through the steps, uh, you should have uh, an instance for the AI core. So you can go in here, and then you can look at the key. Uh, so if you look at the key right here, uh, this will have all of the values uh, that you want. Uh, so go ahead and uh, uh, look at this key here. Uh, this should have uh, values for uh, the client ID, the client secret URL, and so on. Uh, make a note of all of this. Uh, you will need it. Uh, so you go into your uh, uh, Postman, and then in your Postman, uh, first of all, you need to set up uh, the uh, authorization. And the way you would set up authorization uh, is uh, you would use the token, any name here for the token, uh, and you would set it up for OAuth 2.0. OAuth 2.0. Uh, give it a name, uh, and then the grant type is client credentials, and then the token URL from uh, where you have copied it. Uh, so this will be your token URL, and then you have your client ID and your secret. Uh, so go ahead and put all those values. Uh, then you can get the JWT token. And first thing first, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create the resource group, and I'm going to call it AI Tutorial Group. Now, all of this, uh, you can also get it from the reference, uh, the Postman reference that you copied. Uh, but this is the this is a post request, and uh, you're going to admin slash resource group. So once you create this, uh, this is going to create a resource group uh, called AI uh, Tutorial Group uh, in here. And all your artifacts are going to go in here. Uh, next thing what we want to do is uh, we want to create the uh, GitHub repository. So we want to tell SAP AI Core about our GitHub repository. And for this, uh, we are going to uh, provide uh, the uh, uh, name. Any name is fine. Uh, that's fine. Uh, give your GitHub uh, repo URL, uh, your username, and your personal access token. And go ahead and run this. And this should uh, create the uh, repository. In my case, I guess the repository is already created. Now, once you have your repository created, uh, you also need to let uh, post, uh, SAP AI Core know that uh, uh, we are going to monitor this folder in that repository. So we're not going to monitor all the folders, uh, just this uh, folder. And this is where my YAML file resides. Uh, so the pipelines folder is what I want to uh, monitor. Uh, so I'm going to create a, an application. And again, in this application, I'm just going to tell, uh, you give any name for the application name, uh, that is fine. Uh, this is your repository URL, uh, and uh, right now only head is uh, supported. Uh, and the folder, this is the most important one, uh, the folder right here. Uh, so you go ahead and click send, and this should go ahead and create the application for you. So once the application is created, uh, so if you go into your uh, GitHub, uh, into your SAP AI Launchpad, uh, what you will see uh, is if you go into scenarios right here, uh, you will see that it automatically pulls up the scenario uh, because now it is monitoring this pipelines folder and it has seen these two YAML files. But again, for now, just assume that there is just this uh, training.yaml file. Uh, this is the complete uh, completed exercise. Therefore, I have the serving as well. Uh, but just think that there is just the training.yaml file. So if you go into your scenario right here, uh, you will see uh, that uh, under the workflow executable, workflow executable translates to training uh, executable. So under training, uh, there is uh, this uh, there is uh, one template. Uh, again, you also see one under serving, and that's only because uh, the pipelines folder already has the serving.yaml file, but just ignore it for now. Uh, so workflow executable, uh, you can look, you click on it, and you can see that uh, it has pulled all this value from the YAML file, uh, and again, Again, ignore the serving, uh, just uh, look at the workflow executable. Uh, this translates to the training, right? Uh, so you have your IRIS model training and everything. Uh, if you click on it, uh, you can see that uh, these are the mandatory input parameters that need to be supplied. Uh, these are placeholders, so we need to provide values for this uh, before we can submit. So this is a workflow template, uh, so you need to 
uh, submit it uh, before it is executed. And then you have the input artifact here. Uh, this is going to be your data set that you need to provide from AWS S3 bucket, and you have your output artifact that will get copied to the AWS S3 as well. Okay, so at this moment, uh, we are at a logical conclusion. Uh, so we will stop the training for now. Uh, in the next uh, video, uh, we will complete the training phase. Okay, thank you so much for joining. Bye.